so the Hobbit begins his journey. Welcome back again guys from Tampa Bay. Day one of the trip I am seriously already pissed off and quite behind schedule. <clears throat> I had about the worst thing happen when you're leaving for a trip that you want to see. I left myself a good 45 minute margin because I am going through probably the worst area in the entire state and that is Orlando through the Disney corridor through downtown at noon on a Saturday. No joke. There is going to be a parking lot. It's just the way it is and there's no other faster way through there. I've tried to take the surface streets recently and they are under insane construction and it was even longer. So I left myself a big margin. I go to get on the bike. I'm leaving, saying goodbye to the wife. I press start and it goes Doo -doo 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 pow and then just cranks. No ignition. <sighs> Long story short, I ate up that entire buffer figuring out what the heck was wrong. I still don't know why it happened. Pulled off the panel, pulled out all the fuses, everything was good, relays were good, battery was good, just was not igniting. And finally, I just started playing with everything. I mean, it wasn't the kill switch or anything like that. It was cranking, so it wasn't the side stand switch. I just started giving it a lot of throttle, which again, shouldn't make any difference because it's an electronic throttle. And it eventually sputtered to life. It was just some electronic glitch, some sensor glitch. When I started it the very first time and it did the pop. So now my buffer is gone. It's quarter after 11. I have to be on the train with the bike at 2 o'clock at the latest. And GPS tells me with no traffic, I'm going to get there at 1.40. So that's leaving 20 minutes for traffic. And I've got the trunk on, so it means I'm not going to be flying down the freeway at 150 miles an hour to catch up, which I may or may not be tempted to do if I didn't have it. So I'm just going to have to do some creative weaving. I really wish Florida had a lane splitting law because I have a feeling it would come in handy on days like today. Another thing, I'm very glad I did decide to take the trunk. Something that occurred to me in the shower, as good ideas often do, when I'm off taking pictures and walking around and stuff, I need a place to put my helmet that's nice and secure. I'm totally used to doing that. That's the number one reason why I love the saddlebags. I have them on everywhere I go on this bike. I've taken them off once since I've owned the bike just because I knew I wasn't stopping anywhere and I just wanted a little sporty ride. But when I go somewhere I've always got the saddlebag there to put my helmet in and that's another benefit of the FJR over a lot of bikes with saddlebags. It swallows a full face helmet. Most of them don't, surprisingly. You have to have a trunk or you have to have it exposed and just hang it by the D-ring on the side of the bike, which is stolen in two seconds with a knife. So I love the FJR saddlebags, and I use them all the time. Nice looking Valkyrie there. So now I've got room for the helmet, and probably my jacket if it's super hot, although I don't think it's going to be super hot, so I'm not worried about storing the jacket walking around doing photos. Anyway, I've got about probably three hours of riding right now just to go to Orlando to hop on the train. I'll pick this up when I get there. There's really nothing going to be interesting from here to then. It's all interstate. Just heading down 54 here. I'll hop on 275 and then that will branch off into 75 and I'll get an I-4 and take that all the way through Lakeland, Kissimmee, Orlando, all the way to Sanford on the far side of Orlando, almost to Daytona. And we'll see what the uh, procedure is for getting on the train and everything. Boy, this is a messy intersection. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six distinct lanes of traffic all in one intersection. So we're almost here. Had a relatively uneventful way over here. Did make up for lost time. As predicted, traffic did really suck. It's worst right around the International Drive exits, coming up to inner, uh, 
uh, what you call it, universal. So I've never been here before. I'll show you guys if you're going to use the auto train, what you need to do. There should be a sign right here. Oh, a little rough road. Looks like another turn coming up. That must be the terminal, or station, I should say. Ugh. Looks like a right up by the train tracks. Gotta love GPS. I do not miss the days of doing road trips with maps. Auto train to the right. Do not stop on tracks. Good advice. Now the voucher I've got for my ticket says to load your bike first and then claim your ticket. But, not sure where to go to do that. All vehicles stop at Booth. I guess that's where I'll start. <laughs> Hope there's somebody here. Hi. What's the last name? Glenn, G L Y N N. So she gave me some info here and said, go over by the loading ramp. There's a girl in a blue shirt who's going to help you next. That would be her. Hi. Good. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I'm going to pull my stuff out, but I'm going to carry on first. And what do I have to take? Just my soft luggage. Because I have everything packed to go in these, and what's in the trunk can stay with the bike at all times. Makes it easy to check in. And I'm limit you're limited to two pieces of carry-on. Anyway, um, I'll probably put my helmet on in the bag later on. Keep it on now just to show you guys what's going on. All right, let's load up. All right. All right, cool.
it's hard. <laughs> you go through, you make a right, you go to the top of the stairs and make another right. You are in room five. Thanks. That's like a not not that way. How about it? Okay, on the car, we have been on the move for about 20 minutes or so. It took about 15 minutes to get out of the downtown Orlando area, and now we've sped up. I have to say it's really smooth. This is only my second time on a train, and sorry for the audio. My phone is inside the life-proof case. I know that's going to affect it a little bit, but it's a pain in the butt to take it in and out, so it's staying in. So, what have I learned so far? You know what? This little roomette... The pictures and the 3D little thing on their website really don't do it justice. It is super comfy. These seats, the actual seats I'm in are very wide. They are much bigger than a first class airline ticket seat. I've got all my stuff here charging and sitting because there's only one plug. You got one power outlet. Happens to be on this side and we're moving that way. So I want to sit on this side just so I can see where we're going and not where we've been. Um, identical seat on the other side and lots of leg room these seats also fully recline you can pull this little bar down here and it reclines pretty much just like a car seat and uh, or I should say a recliner in a living room the bottom moves out and you can lean back if you want or it can go flat down and that's how they both turn into a big bed and it's, I think they said the spec on it is six and a half feet so that's good that means my feet won't be touching a wall the upper deck which I'm not going to be using because I'm in this alone that one I believe the spec on that was six foot one or six foot zero something like that so slightly smaller up there and they make the beds up for you um, during your dinner time. Really kind of some cruise-like things here. And I've been talking to some other passengers. This car is pretty much a ghost ship. Um, there are three of us occupying the second floor. And it's pretty cool being up here, I'll tell you what, because number one, it's quiet. I can barely hear the wheels. And I'm far enough back where I can barely hear the the engine horn when we go through intersections I mean, it's not going to wake me up or anything like that it's quieter than being on an inside cabin on a cruise you don't have any of the the engine noise or vibration or anything like that there's some movement but man it's like very cadillac like man it's like floating down on a cloud especially up here in the second level as i say that we go over some bumps but you know these cars have big freaking springs man overall it's very comfy i'm gonna have no problem falling asleep I do feel sorry for everybody sitting in coach though. I'll, I'll take you through there and uh, show you, but they all have to just sit in their seat for the next 16 hours. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. That was well worth the extra 350 bucks to get my own little room here. And even if you're sharing this with another person, no problem whatsoever. You're not going to be bumping knees or anything like that. There is plenty of room in here to sit down. And obviously, as long as both of you aren't more than six foot two, it'll be a very nice, comfortable rest during the night now that being said that's about all you get in here the bathrooms are shared they are exactly like an airline 
bathroom. They're very tiny. I think there's one shower downstairs. I haven't checked out the ones downstairs. There are three toilets downstairs, one upstairs. I just hit the head up here. There's also a little coffee station and ice water station and ice maker. And I talked to another passenger who, funny enough, has the entire downstairs to herself. She is the only one. She's with a family, and the ones downstairs are the bigger rooms where they have uh, room for four people, and they have the entire car to themselves. And like I said, there's only three of us up here. I'm the only single. There's two other couples up here, so it's you know pretty quiet, no screaming kids or anything. It's working out really well. So I'm going to check out downstairs, but looking on the little map that I found, and it's on the wall by the stairs, you know, kind of like finding the emergency exits or the directory at a mall, you find the little restroom thing. So they got one toilet up here. And like I said, it, it's basic. You get a, a nice sink, a lot of water pressure. It's sprayed all over the freaking place. <laughs> and then a, a pretty normal airline type suction toilet or, you know, RV, whatever you're used to. And it works fine. Plenty of room in there, but no shower in this one. And I don't, I wouldn't want to be taking a shower here anyway, but I think there's one downstairs because on the map it has a double room. That's what I was going to mention. It has what they call a dressing room and then a bigger bathroom. So there's probably a shower in that one or at least handicap accessible, you know, something like that. So in this room, let me turn on the lights here. I'll go over the basics. So if anybody's curious, uh, this is what you get. So I showed you the beds. Here we have a tray table. And they've got instructions on how to work everything in the room printed here on the tray table. They've got using the tray table, basically you push, pull it up here. Uh, that's kind of heavy. And it rotates out and then you got these little wings that come out and you got yourself a nice table. So you can put your laptop on here, or whatever. And it's, it's high enough. It's uh, about the same as flipping out the back table on a airplane. I'm not gonna use that right now. And then they got how to change your seats into a bed, which they do for you. They come around and uh, yeah, I, I didn't know really what was going on because it was my first time doing all this, but I boarded right when they called first boarding and I sat around up here for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And then the, I don't know what her title is, uh, uh, attendant came through and she was telling everybody, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, making sure that she had the right time for your allotted dinner. Um, the coach people have a choice between five and seven on this train. Everyone in sleeper cars can choose between five, seven, or nine for dinner. And I chose the nine just because I don't really eat too early. And she explained to us about how the bed timing works. She asked what time she would like my bed made up. And I said 10, so I figured, you know, after I'm done with dinner, come back, and uh, apparently they, when you're in a single passenger, they only do the bottom, fine with me. My only question is where they put the luggage, because you're only allowed uh, two carry-ons per person. I carried on my soft luggage as I planned. I only made one goof, one goof, not a big deal, but uh, I packed my sandals, because I almost forgot them, and I, I threw them in my trunk, and the trunk's on the bike, so now I'm stuck in my <laughs> boots while I'm on the train. And you have to wear some type of shoe anywhere on the train, so boots stay on. Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, my feet aren't as comfy, obviously, as they would be in sandals, but that's the only goof I made. Everything else is working out beautifully. I've got my USB charging hub, and this is just a charging hub, by the way. This is something very, very handy when you do anything like uh, I do with all the equipment. This is a 10 port, all high amp hub. I got it for like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks on Amazon. Oh my God, that, that comes in so handy. So that's what I'm charging. I've got uh, my GoPro, my backpack, and my phone all charging right now. And uh, that's, that's all I'm gonna be using here. I've got hat cam that I'll take you guys around with. Uh, let's see, finishing off the room, we've got two lights one on each side and they can turn on off or go into a night mode which basically puts one of them into a very very dim mode just for a little tiny bit of, of light at night you got a couple hangers they give you up here a couple pop-out coat racks there one on the other side too your door does have a lock 
right here. However, it's not like a hotel. You don't have a key or anything, so when you're out of the room, it doesn't lock. So don't leave anything valuable in sight would be my suggestion. You know, I'm certainly not going to go anywhere with my GoPro or anything sitting here on the seat. I'll, you know, throw my jacket over or something when I go to dinner. Not super concerned about it. Like I said, there's only a few of us on here, but if you do happen to go on a trip like this and you're alone and it's full of people, especially kids, think ahead. That's all I'm saying. So that's what you get. Um, you got some stairs over here and that is to climb up top because once you flip this down it comes to like here so you've got about one foot of width after you close the door to go up on those stairs that's that's the width you have right here and that's how you climb up to the top rack and that's it um you got you got a window over there and, and a curtain i'm just keeping that closed this curtain here is for the door window I'll open the door. I'm just got it shut right now for quiet. You got some, uh, you know, safety brochures like an airliner. This is kind of cool. It gives you a little rundown of the itinerary of the, the cities we're going to be going through. It starts out in Sanford here. It goes through uh, Deland and how do you say that? Plotka, Jacksonville. Then we hit the state line going through Georgia and just up Savannah. Then we hit the state line going to South Carolina. Then Charleston, Florence, and then the state line to North Carolina, Fayetteville, Selma, Wilson, Rocky Mount, then the state line going to Virginia, through Petersburg, Richmond, Ashland, Fredericksburg, Quantico, and then we end in Lorton. And it gives you some information about all the stops there, so I'll read that for fun a little bit later. And the other stuff is, uh, you know, about the free Wi-Fi and in the event of a crash, you're going to die and all that kind of good stuff. You know, emergency windows, go ahead and jump your 20 feet and break your legs, all that kind of good stuff. A couple pillows. And I assume they're going to bring sheets and stuff when they make up the beds because there's none in here. You've got a little control here for the air temp. Cool to warm. And the only vent is up top there. And you, you can't shut it off or really turn it up. <laughs> it's got a little lever and it doesn't do jack. You've got these little lights here that are kind of like car lights all around. You've got one here, one over there, and one way up top there for the top bunk. Let's see, You've got some washcloths or towels or something up there. The coffee station has ice water and obviously coffee, regular and decaf, and it's like one of those machines, not like a cake cup, but kind of a brew station. It's actually pretty damn good coffee. I just had a cup myself. They give you a couple free bottles of water in your cabin, and I would assume they're gonna replenish those. They also give us breakfast in the morning. I don't know what time, didn't ask. Not a real big breakfast guy, but I'll take it. We arrive at the station at 9 a.m. I imagine I'll be on the road certainly before 10. What I'm gonna do is hit Route 66, and that takes me right to the top of the Shenandoah National Park, and that'll be the start of Skyline Drive. That'll be the start of the actual trip. Route 66 is just gonna be like a quick little highway jaunt. I think it's like 100 miles, I have to go, big deal. That's uh, way, way less than I did coming to Orlando. Let's see, is that it? You got a little trash can down below, and yep, that's going to do it. Uh, actually, uh, there's, there's a built-in kind of radio. I don't know where the stations come from, I'm not using it. And then a push to call button, just like a flight attendant. That's it. So that's my review of the room. I will be going out through the cars a little bit later. It's still really early. It's like a quarter to five right now. And I'm going to hit up the lounge and check that out. I, I was hearing from some people they weren't quite set up yet, even though they just opened. So hopefully they got some food or snacks or something because kind of getting hungry. I skipped lunch. My wife bought me a uh, sausage McMuffin I had for breakfast, but that was at 10. So that's all I had today. And that's it. Let's see what happens. Let's go for a tour. So I'm in the middle, upper deck. Here's our coffee station. 
cup, sugar, creamer, napkins, regular decaf, ice water, ice. That's it. More sleeps down there. Let's see, we're cruising pretty good now. Two cars that way should be the lounge, and three should be the diner. Transfers are all on the second decks. What are you doing? Don't be on this auto train. You up there recording stuff? Yep. Guess what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you recording it right now, but yep. guess what? You got the power team. Welcome to the auto train. It's always a pleasure. You in the big Chris car. It All is right. what it is. You in the lounge area and we doing it. That's right. So guess what? The best experience is the good experience. You we got, got it. it. Come on, man. Give me something good. Let's do it. All right, what you got? Whatever you good. want. Man, come on, man. Let's, let's oh, hell yeah. All right, man. This I like that um, that new helmet camera thing. You know, you're the, <laughs> the best experience. <laughs> there we got it. Let's do it, baby. That's right. Yeah, he got. You know what? Put me on. I I want you you're to on. put me on. You're going so guess YouTube, what? Man. You tell everybody that Chris, big Chris, and you right, go well. on Amtrak.com when you record this and say you got it. He is the best. <laughs> you hear me? You just said it yourself. I, uh, oh, that's it. He is the best, and I am the best, and that's what you need to do. Put it on there. Because you are the best guy. About a week, look yourself up right there. My man. <laughs> and in about a week, you hook me up. Yep. Put it online, too. You got it. Amtrak.com. Absolutely. Put it on there. I will. You want to bet. All right, so what can I do for you, my friend? I'll do a cheeseburger and a Samuel Adams. Sounds good. Back in the car. I'm going to hang out here for a little while. <sighs> Tell you what, when you're hungry, you don't really mind paying 15 bucks with tip for a microwave 7-Eleven burger and one bottle of beer. <laughs> 
it hit the spot though. I really was hungry. Now I'm just kind of uh, ready to chill. I'm gonna take these boots off. Feet are starting to bark. It's not so bad when you're standing, but when you're kind of sitting here, you know, they're, they're made for being in that good riding position or standing, but not sitting around like this. So I'm gonna kick them off, chill out. People across from me moved. I guess uh, the AC wasn't working quite right on their end. So uh, they got a cooler room. Mine's fine. So I pretty much have it to myself up here right now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, review of the lounge real quick. You saw some of it there, but man, super comfy, plush, lots of room. And if you need to work, if you need to charge stuff, every freaking seat in there has two power outlets. So tons of power great views you can obviously see on both sides very uh open and spacious and quite cool a lot cooler than it is in here and actually one of the cars i walked through and it's got to be 10 degrees cooler i think they're having some problems in this car but i'm okay so i don't have any issue with it so that's it for now oh one thing they do have a lot of limitations on the wi-fi here but it's all in the download stream. You can't install anything from the App Store or Google Play. So kick on your cellular if you need to install something. I was trying to figure out a way of getting these videos off my phone because I'm probably gonna want to do more of these. And it's obviously really convenient here when I especially want a little light. So I'm gonna use Dropbox. So I had to turn on cellular or turn off Wi-Fi to install Dropbox, they have limitations on downloads. They limit files to 10 megabytes and they limit your streaming. So you can't do Netflix and streaming audio, but they're not limiting uploads. So files are going up to Dropbox, no problemo. It's slow because they're just going over a Wi-Fi uh, to cellular connection, but it's working. So I'll just let that go, plug the sucker back in and bada bing, bada boom. I'm sure I'll have Wi-Fi at hotels and stuff too. So no problems there and everything else gets dumped to my computer and the external drive so problem solved see you later so i just got back from dinner and they've made up the bed so i'm going to show you what that looks like 